Hello everyone. Today we are going to learn about this area. This is a central part of the hemi section of the brain. Let us have a look at these structures. Shaded green, purple, red, light blue and these two shaded areas, orange and light green. So I have a question for you. Identify the red colored structure. Is it the optic asthma, anterior commissure, pituitary gland, lamina terminalis, supraoptic recess or infundibular recess? Yes, you are right. It is the lamina terminalis. So let us have a detailed look into this region, the anterior region, and we will name all these structures with, that we have shaded right now. This is the anterior commissure. It is the second largest commissure after corpus callosum. Earlier we remember learning about the corpus callosum and this was called the rostrum of the corpus callosum, which is like a beak. And that extends till this part. This is called anterior commissure. Corpus callosum contains large commissural fibers connecting two parts of the majority of the cerebrum, mostly the neocortical cerebrum. But the anterior commissure is connecting the paleocortical part of the cerebrum. Okay, that means the temporal lobe, uh, the amygdala and all are connected to each other through the uh, anterior commission. Now, this structure is the optic chiasma. Optic chiasma is where the half of the neurons of each optic nerve decussates. So we call it as hemidecussation. So that occurs in the midline and on the optic chiasma. And stretched between these two, you have this structure and that is known as the lamina terminalis. So lamina terminalis is found in front of the third ventricle. This cavity that you see here is the third ventricle. This is the aqueduct of Sylvius and this is called the hypothalamic sulcus. So this region is actually hypothalamus and the cavity here is third ventricle and this is forming the anterior boundary. So you can see the anterior commission above the optic chiasm below and the lamina terminalis between it. Okay, now one more point that you need to know is that in front of this, as you remember in my earlier video, I told that this is called the paraterminal gyri because that is just in front of the lamina terminalis. So here you actually have the subarachnoid space. You actually have the subarachnoid cistern near the lamina terminalis and that is known as the cistern of the lamina terminalis. So in front, you have cistern of lamina terminalis, but behind you have third ventricle. Please note that both of these contain CSF. So CSF inside the ventricle in the third ventricle, but CSF in the cistern of the lamina terminalis because cistern is basically a CSF containing space. It is just the expanded subarachnoid space. All right, now next you can see this structure. This is a pituitary gland and it is very important to note a relation. Pituitary gland is just inferior to the optic chiasma. This is very important because uh, any tumors in this region, in the cellar region, maybe a pituitary macroadenoma, okay, that uh, if that enlarges upwards, it can compress on the center of the optic chiasma and cause a bitemporal hemianopia. So this relation is also very, very important. Now let us look at the two shaded regions that we mentioned before. Okay, let us have a look at that. That is in the third ventricle. The first region is over here. Okay, if you look carefully, that is creating an acute angle. It is like a pocket of the third ventricle, an acute angle formed between the lamina terminalis and the optic chiasma. Okay, and next you have one more space that is shaded like this with light green. Okay, that is going into the pituitary stalk, slightly into the pituitary stalk. These two are named as recesses of the third ventricle and you have specific names for it. Let us have a look at the names. This is called the supraoptic recess and this is called the infundibular recess. The name is intuitive because this recess is just in above the optic asthma. So it is called supraoptic recess and this is into the infundibulum or the pituitary stalk. That is why it is called infundibular recess. So these were the six areas that we marked in the initial part of my video. So let us have uh, identify these structures in this MR image. This is a T2 weighted MR image because you are seeing CSF as white. Okay, this is all CSF. You can see CSF inside the ventricular system as well as in the cisterns. So let us try to identify each of the structures following the same pattern that we did. First, we identify the corpus callosum over here and we know that this is rostrum and it ends at the anterior commissure over here. Next. You can see this structure, this is the optic chiasma. And you can see this, this is the lamina terminalis. 
and you can identify here that is the pituitary gland above the pituitary gland you have the optic asthma you can see the csf filled the third ventricle creating two recesses over here this is one recess and this is another recess they are the supra optic and the infundibular recess okay so these are the regions that we uh, found out uh, just now in the previous diagram and now in this t2 weighted mr image next we go to a t1 weighted mr image and in this, we'll do that same exercise. Okay, we'll first identify the anterior commissure. You can see the anterior commissure near the uh, rostrum of the uh, corpus callosum as well as the phonix. Can you see the phonix over here? Okay, the phonix uh, is uh, divides near the anterior commissure into a small pre-commissural phonix and a larger post-commissural phonix. The post-commissural phonix will be directed towards the mammillary body that you see here. Okay, that is a very important relation. Let me just quickly have a look at uh, this and show you that same orientation. This is the post-commissural phonix that will be directed towards the mammillary body. So that is again what you see here in this image. It is directed onto the mammillary body. You can't see the continuity here, but it is. it will be directed, okay, oriented towards the mammillary body. So you identify the anterior commissure. You can also see over here the optic chiasm and between that stretched is the lamina terminalis in before that you can see a darkened region that will be the uh, lamina terminalis cistern or the cistern of the lamina terminalis behind that you are seeing the third ventricle right and this is the pituitary gland i want you to notice something in the pituitary gland the posterior aspect is showing a higher signal can you see that a white color here in a t1 weighted mri that is classic uh, posterior pituitary will show any a uh, high increase signal in a t1 weighted mri that's how you can identify the posterior pituitary and you can see again the relation of the pituitary gland to the optic chiasm above and can you see the two recesses of the third ventricle anterior two recesses what are they they are the supra optic recess and the infundibular recess they are very clear clearly marked uh, the very acute angle between the lamina terminals and the optic chiasm is seen here and also the sharp pencil sharp infundibular recess that is extending into the pituitary stalk all are very clear uh, in these images all right now let us look at the significance of lamina terminalis the first is a surgical significance this is the lamina terminalis as i mentioned before here you have third ventricle and here you have the cistern of the lamina terminalis now you can do a, a, a a perforation of the lamina terminalis in order to access into the third ventricle okay so this is a, a surgical access a surgical approach into the third ventricle this is called fenestration of the lamina terminalis that can be done here uh, this is also done uh, in surgeries of the anterior uh, cerebral artery which is found in the cistern of the lamina terminalis over here so all of these procedures uh, lamina terminalis and these relations are very important Next, lamina terminalis is actually the closed anterior neuropore. You remember, this is neurulation process, and this is the neural tube, which has a remaining anterior neuropore and a posterior neuropore. The anterior neuropore will close, and the closed part becomes the lamina terminalis. So it has an embryological significance also. Next, we go to a functional significance of lamina terminalis. In the lower aspect of lamina terminalis, you have a vascular organ of the lamina terminalis also called organum vasculosum of the lamina terminalis why is it important that and other structures that you see here all these green colored structures and a couple more they are all together called as circumventricular organs circumventricular organs are unique in the brain because they are regions where you have partial blood brain barrier Almost all tissues in the brain will have a blood-brain barrier, but these much locations, you have partial blood-brain barrier. That means the brain tissue is exposed to the components of the blood in these specific regions. That is why they are, they are called absent blood-brain barriers. What is the significance of that? It means that these regions of brain tissues can actually sample changes in the blood. For example, organovasculosum lamina of lamina terminalis or OVLT is said to uh, play along with subfornitial organ uh, SFO together in sensing osmolarity changes, osmolar uh, changes within the blood. 
and thus it will regulate the formation of ADH by the, the nuclei in the hypothalamus and thus regulate the water content in our body by regulating thirst. So it has a role in thirst regulation. So you can see the organum vasculosum will be here and these two nuclei, the supraoptic nuclei and paraventricular nuclei are the nuclei which are uh, responsible for production of antidiotic hormone and the signals from the OVLT and the uh, subfornicial organ will be sent towards these and they will produce ADH and that's how regulation of thirst occurs. So it is basically a sensing mechanism within the brain uh, to know the, the, the osmolarity, osmolar changes of the blood and thus sense thirst and uh, you know um, regulate the amount of water in our body. It's kind of a limb of the homeostatic mechanism to regulate water in our body. So thank you so much. So that was about the lamina terminalis and the structures in the anterior part of the third ventricle. Thank you so much.